about polar molecules today. Polar molecules. Yeah, that was homework. Keep your lab open though. In order to be a polar molecule, you have to have dipoles, okay? In order to be a polar molecule, and of course we're talking covalent compounds here, right? Because we're talking molecules. In order to be a polar molecule, you must contain dipoles. And in order to find out if you have dipoles, your difference in electronegativity has to be greater than or equal to 0.5. And this is from that bonding continuum that looked like a timeline. So you must have dipoles. But having dipoles doesn't mean you're going to be polar. Okay? Having dipoles doesn't mean... you are a polar molecule. So you can have polar covalent bonds and be polar. You can have polar covalent bonds and be nonpolar, but you cannot be nonpolar covalent bonds and be polar. So What's the difference? Shape determines whether the molecule is polar overall. So we have to look at the symmetry, the shape of the molecule. How many people here have not taken 3U or 4C physics? Not taken physics. Okay. Okay, okay, you're in it. So haven't taken it or are not in it. Anybody? Okay, so we're going to treat dipoles like vectors. That sounds very promising. That was, I'm sure, groans of joy. Okay. We treat dipoles like vectors. Thing. But when you have your dipoles as vectors, these arrows, it's easy to add them. So... When you have a vector, you have a tail, and you have a head. When you add vectors, you add them head to tail. So you take your first vector, when you add your second vector, you add the tail of the second one to the head of the first one. So if I have a vector that goes in this direction and then I have another vector and it goes straight up this is how I add them so I've got vector 1 or dipole 1 and dipole 2 if I only have these two dipoles and my start is always at the tail the start is always at the tail of the first vector. 
did I end up back at the start after I added these two vectors together? Your hand's up. You're going to answer my question. Deal with him. Am I back where I started? I am? I added this to this and then this to this. So right now I'm here. So I'm not, I am not back to where I started. So then we have this thing called the net dipole or the resultant vector. Do you guys use resultant? Okay. Never heard of it. Okay. So you have this net or resultant vector, and it always goes from the start to the head. Always goes the tail of your resultant or net. Starts from your start. So the tail is at the start, and the head of your resultant or net dipole is always where you finished. If you end up with a net dipole, you're polar. If you end up with a net dipole or a resultant vector, your molecule is polar. With the tetrahedral, it doesn't have vectors. It doesn't have dipoles. So it's already nonpolar. So you don't have to do this. Let's pick a structure that has dipoles from your lab. Um, who has the strongest pull on electrons? Abdul. Nitrogen. So your dipoles should go towards nitrogen. Okay. <coughs> So this is not by any means accurate. We're not measuring angles when we do this. But we can kind of eyeball this. We're going to pretend this is vector 1, 2, and 3. So when you start, you pick a point. Here's my starting, oops, here's my starting point. And my first vector goes in this direction. Literally moved it down the page so it's on the same angle-ish as vector number one. Vector number two, kind of going up. Vector number three, totally going the other direction. You're always adding head to tail. It does not matter which vector goes first, second, or third. It just matters that you don't reuse the same vector. Okay? Am I back where I started? No. So there is a net dipole on this structure. And you can show it to the side. We know it's going up. Somehow it's going up towards nitrogen. So we can just put it off the side and say there's a net dipole. Because there's a net dipole, NH3 is polar. Can 
I pick the angle and the sides from the ones that are on my structure. Oh. I did. See? Okay. If you're if you're not paying if you're not watching what I'm drawing, you miss little things. Vector number one. Vector number one. Same direction, approximately the same length. Vector number two, same direction. Vector number three, same direction. Okay? So it doesn't matter what order you add them as long as you're adding all three. And will it ever come back to work? Absolutely. And that is not a type. Can we do an example? Correct. You know what? That's a great idea, Matt. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look at um, carbon dioxide. Structural diagram. Difference in electronegativity is? One, polar or nonpolar? Is that a polar covalent bond or a nonpolar covalent bond? Nonpolar. Then that would not be a good example because I wouldn't have any dipoles. Good guess. Good second guess. 50 50 chance of getting it right. 0.5 or above. 0.5 or above. So here we go CO2. Did, oh, okay. There's a reason that I asked you to draw the perspective diagrams here. And the reason being, it's hard to do this question if your structure looks like this. If your perspective diagram looks like that, you're not going to get the right answer. So, you should have had all of your atoms ended up in a straight line. Okay. All right, are you okay with this right now? All right, who's got the bigger pull on the electrons, carbon or oxygen? Jovan? Oxygen. So that means... We have two vectors. Because it's linear, they're on the same line, so they're in the same plane, and they're equal in size. So now, if you draw this out, and I say my start is here, I go first in that direction, because that's the way I picked. I picked the right one first. And then my second one is right on top of it, equal amount, but opposite direction. Am I back where I started? So, no net dipole. Or you can say dipoles cancel. Therefore, non-polar molecule. So this is an example of a molecule that has polar covalent bonds, but is non-polar. Okay. <laughs> 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 Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Questions are good. It's even better if you figure it out before it falls out. You okay with that? 
Okay. Uh, H, you had to make H2, I believe, right? Let me just see if I can find. Okay, so based on your lab molecules, H2, polar or nonpolar? What do you think? What do you think, Megan? It is nonpolar. The molecule is nonpolar because there's no dipoles. Dihydrogen monoxide, polar or nonpolar. Take a look at it. H2O, polar or nonpolar? It's polar. Which molecule are we on? Hydrogen, H2. Dihydrogen monoxide. That looks like that. There's dipoles. Which so polar covalent bonds, are they going to cancel? No. You're going to end up with a net dipole. Okay. Say that again. HCl, what do you think? What's the difference in electronegativity? 0.9. It doesn't have a dipole then. Does that dipole cancel? No, because there's nothing to cancel it with, so it's polar. Okay, let me, hold on a sec. Let me hear your question. If I have two hydrogens and I put them together, as in H2? <laughs> Back to acetone. Is this structure polar or nonpolar? Polar. Its dipole is its net dipole. A, B, and A, X. A, B is one element, or one element of two different types of elements, and then A, A is one element twice? Yeah. Or however many? This is the same element, and A, B, two elements. The way I've written them, these are both diatomic molecules. One of them can never be polar, where the other one is sometimes polar. The difference will be, because these are the same element, their electronegativities are the same, so the delta E n is zero. But the A, B, it can range, right? You gotta look on the bonding continuum, where does it fall? So same element, that means these are your diatomic elements. Hofbrinkel. So, your diatomic elements will all be nonpolar. CF4, is this a carbon bonded to one other element? Yes. Is there an even number? Yes. So, therefore, this structure is nonpolar. How about CO2? 
nonpolar, only bonded to oxygen, and even number. How about carbon monoxide? It's polar. There's not an even number of oxygens. How about CH3F? CH3F. Why is it polar, Rachel? There's three different elements. Carbon is bonded to two different elements. So, these two are polar. How about... C50H102. Polar and nonpolar? <laughs> nonpolar. Polar and nonpolar? Polar. This carbon is bonded to three hydrogens and an oxygen. Or you look at that and say carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, three elements, got to be polar. Okay? Just a little trick. All right. So if you take a look at page 88, number 8, A. Polar or nonpolar? Michael, polar or nonpolar? 8A. <laughs> polar. Yep, there's three elements. Okay, 8B. 8B. No, no question. No. Polar and nonpolar? Nonpolar. <laughs> Megan, I'm kidding. Which question? <laughs> diatomic element with an odd number won't happen. All the diatomic elements will have an even number. Like C can be C4, sulfur can be S8. Never it's always going to be numb. Okay? HBR, polar or nonpolar? Are you blocking somebody or are you holding the glasses on? You know, I could move him. Okay, Matt, what do you think? HBR. Do you say nonpolar? You think it's polar? It's a diatomic molecule. Does it have a dipole? What's the difference in electronegativity? Right now, you should be leaning towards polar, but double check it with a dipole. Does it have a dipole? Difference in electronegativity, H and BR. So? Polar, PCL3, polar and nonpolar. <laughs> Guys, we're finishing this before you leave. PCL3, polar or nonpolar? Polar. HC2H3O2, polar. CCL4, nonpolar.
Obrinsky, Tara Taylor, and Andrew Field. That's the Then it's wrong. Because the difference, the difference in electronegativity is point. Point 0.9 and it's pyramidal. It's, it's just like that. So they go up. No. They go down because chlorine's here. Chlorine is more electronegative. So it's going to go net down. Uh, you're going to hand your lab notebooks in before you leave, please. Yes. 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 Are you guys not finished? Did you not finish your lab yesterday? So you guys didn't all finish your molecules? No, we finished all the molecules. All right, labs are due tomorrow. If you're done, you can hand them in.